Welcome back. So many people spent time outdoors this past holiday weekend, and many of us likely got a little too much sun. But why does our skin burn, and how exactly does sunscreen actually work to protect us? Joining us now we discuss, to discuss, we welcome our medical contributor, Dr. Ali Kazrayan. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Considering this is a daily problem for us Floridians. Mm -hmm. So let's start com from kind of the basics. What are UVA and UVB rays? So when you look at the, you know, we look in the sun and, and there's visible light and that's not harmful, but we can't see the, the ultraviolet light. So we, we always hear about UVA and UVB light. And, and so basically this is the, the dangerous light. You know, you can get it even in a tanning bed. Uh, and so this is, that can cause danger. And the one simple way to think about it is think about UVA as, as that, that can affect aging. It can cause wrinkles. This gets deep in and breaks down collagen. And collagen is a structural protein. And so it can loosen the skin and cause wrinkles. So that's the damage that causes there. UVB light, think B for burning. That can cause the damage uh, that can cause burning. And both of these things can potentially cause damage to the DNA and, and, and those mutations can cause cancer. So skin cancer is by far one of the most common cancers that we deal with. Basal cell carcinoma is in fact the, the most common cancer in man, um, more so than breast, prostate, lung, and colon cancer combined. Uh, and, and so when we think about that, you want to be very, very mindful that just going out in the sun without protecting yourself can be really, really dangerous. And tanning beds is, is really one thing to be mindful. If you, if you go in a tanning bed younger than 35, you exponentially increase your risk of melanoma by 75%. Wow. <laughs> You know, so, so, was his yeah. info when I was using going. those. Right? <laughs> so, 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 so it's really, really something that you want to be very, very careful about being responsible. And again, it doesn't mean you can't go out in the sun, mm -hmm. but you want to be very, very careful because increasing uh, sunburns, uh, especially at a younger age, especially with babies, uh, th those things can potentially have, have implications further down in life. Should people be using tanning beds at all, even if they coat themselves in you know, SPF 50? Again, I'm biased, you know, from, from my perspective as a physician. Again, I'm not a dermatologist or a surgical oncologist, but, you know, on my radio show uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had a surgical oncologist, Dr. Lynn, uh, come on, and we really, really sat down and broke down melanoma in an hour-long discussion, and it just seems like it's an unnecessary risk. You know, melanin or melanocytes, you know, the thing that makes us tan, is basically uh, the skin's response to injury. You know, the thing that makes us all glow beautifully in the sun. Yeah, it um, makes us really oh. pretty. We it enjoy that. Yeah, it makes you look a little we slimmer. Like that. Yeah. So how can we prevent the damage then? You've got so, many ways to staying in the shade to start with. You've got a few things. Yeah, so so one thing that you want to do is essentially, you know, common sense things, cover yourself. So you want to, you want to if you're not going out in the sun and the beach, wear things that protect yourself. Cover your arms and legs. You wear, wear a hat that, that's large. It covers your, your head and your ears and your neck and, 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 and do that. Sunglasses, you know, you can get melanoma in the eye. You want to be very, very oh, careful. Wow. But you want to wear sunglasses that cover for both U UVA and UVB mm -hmm. uh, rays. You also want to be very mindful of, of protecting yourself when you are in the sun. Uh, create tent, create scenarios where you can get in the shade. And again, this is a little bit tangential, but make sure you also hydrate. You know, it's very, very hot. That's, that has nothing to do with the, with the sunburn. Right. Um, the other thing that you want to be very mindful is um, the sunblock that you use. Make sure that it's got broad coverage for both uh, UVA and UVB. And that, that sun protective factor, the SPF, mm. um, a lot of people kind of wonder what that exactly means. It, it, if you can imagine that, let's say you go out in the sun and you burn after 10 minutes, um, a, a SPF of 30 increases that 30 fold so it gives you 300 minutes before you burn now let's you're out in the sun you're right. burning up you got to cool off you dip in the water and that presents some dangers in and itself so what things can we do to help prevent drowning a little bit better so drowning is a really important thing to keep in mind uh, you know we've heard a lot about dry drowning secondary drowning and things like that in the news that brings it up to attention those are one to two percent of drowning. So, so one of the things that we have to be mindful is not focus on the on the zebras and be mindful of just the primary aspect of the thing. Where, when you're out, especially with your children, pay attention mm -hmm. to them. One thing, you know, I think it's very important for people to learn to swim at a very, very early age. So as soon as it's possible, we should all in 2017 know how to swim. So that's sure. one thing. But that doesn't necessarily prevent drowning. Uh, so when you're out, pay attention 
You know, so don't don't lose sight of paying attention to your children. Pay attention to each other. People should not be going out by themselves, you know, in dangerous situations and just kind of floating around without people but knowing they that they're do. out there. I mean, that, you know, Absolutely. You can, it's so hard to watch all of the kids when you you're know. at the beach and everybody else is having fun. So what Absolutely. is some of, like some idea, just you know, some kind of idea of someone drowning? I mean, if you're seeing that, so, so you may not realize one, it's going on. The thing that you have to be very, very mindful of. These are things that happen very quickly. It's about 20 to 60 seconds when someone is actually in a situation where they may be struggling before something may happen. So it's a very, very quick scenario before someone actually is in a dangerous situation and they're actually drowning because once it happens, they're not going to be able to respond. You know, so, so have a very, very keen out look out. You know, again, lifeguards, they're, they're constantly panning the area. So mm -hmm. if you have children out there, you have to pay attention to them. The other thing is when someone is drowning, they're going to be, you know, if it's an active drowning, they're going to be floating out with their nose up. That's a natural response. If someone's down, they may have had another issue going on, a medical issue, heart attack, something else, an injury. So be mindful of that. Um, the other thing to, to, to keep in mind, you know, that, that we discuss is if you're going to go out and help, really assess the situation. If you're out in the ocean, if there's a riptide, if something of that nature, um, be mindful that you're not going to go out there and create a second person that's going to drown. So, so make sure you call for help before you're going to go out and, and, and be the hero and help the situation so that people are aware of what's going on. When you come back in, major, major scenarios as you would do with any kind of resuscitative effort, make sure that the person is out, make sure they're safe. If you're going to approach, approach from, the behind, from behind so you're not in the front and, and the person's going to struggle back at you and you're going to create a bad situation, bring the person back um, when you're on shore. Assess to see if they're breathing. Initiate CPR if it's necessary, and again, make sure you call for help. Uh, you from mentioned that dry drown, or yeah, dry drowning. So dry drowning and, and secondary drowning. You know, they're used interchangeably, and it's been in the media recently because unfortunately that that came up uh, in in the news as as some young children were assessing this. Basically, this is a scenario where someone is out of the water and they are, are having difficulty breathing. That's been associated with an episode of something going on in the water earlier. So dry drowning is basically um, a, a take a, when someone takes in water in the nostril or the mouth and it causes an initial spasm of the upper airway, the larynx and things like that. So that, that closes off so you can't breathe. That usually is something that's very immediate that you notice. And, and if it's significant enough, it could potentially cause, um, unfortunately, a fatal episode if it's that significant. But if it's attended to very, very quickly where people are having difficulty breathing, uh, they, they can't get air in and you address it and get help, it can potentially be something that's salvageable. Secondary drowning is when someone takes in water and it gets into the lungs and it's not something that immediately causes a drowning episode but even up to 24 hours later uh, it can cause inflammation uh, and, and irritation and swelling in the lungs so later on someone is having trouble with breathing and the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide back and mm. forth so someone may be coughing they may be having irritation they may be having what's called an increased work of breathing they're really laboring to breathe you can see in between the ribs you can see it in the collarbone they're just working okay. really hard to breathe but you say later on how late up to 24 hours later 24 hours mm, wow. oh my goodness and i think is, i saw that on a csi yeah. episode i've never heard of that I'm trying to figure out wow what Oh well, goodness. Dr. Ali, thank That's you scary. so much for this. We've actually got a few more things living in Florida, these same things that we need to be aware of. So we are going to chat more with Dr. Ali, including a superbug that has healthcare facilities concerned. Stay with us. We'll be right back.